previously on MasterChef. This is United Taste of America. We want to find out where in America do the best cooks come from. Please welcome Graham Elliott. Definitely ours. The caliber of contestant and home cook is amazing. So far, 10 cooks have earned an apron from the Northeast and the Midwest. What do you think? Girl, you are on your way. It's a definite yes from me. That <laughs> burst of flavor is there. For me, it's an absolute resounding yes. Symbolic of the Midwest. And I love this dish. I'm a yes. <laughs> Tonight on MasterChef, please welcome Susan Fenniger. The regional auditions continue. Everybody knows West Side the best side. I like that. That's sass. As the best from the West battle it out for a white apron. I am here to fight for that apron. You're exactly what we're looking for. Absolute resounding yes. This very much speaks California. I think everyone in the West, we're just a little weirder. Wow. wow. It's pretty obvious that it's a big no. I promise you, I can do this. I just don't think you're ready. Next MasterChef is in this room, right? which is crazy. I would just want to make you proud. I want to see where Gordon at. Where he at? Welcome back, everybody, to MasterChef United Taste of America. Come on. Tonight, another region will prove that they have what it takes to compete at the highest level. The best of the best will earn a MasterChef apron. If you can show us that you're the shining star of your region, you'll put yourself one step closer to the title, the trophy, and a quarter of a million dollars. Now, one of my favorite parts of MasterChef is getting a great insight to America's culinary diversity. And this season, we are truly celebrating that diversity, let me tell you. Now, we've seen the Northeast and the Midwest. It's time for another regional round of auditions. You guys ready? Tonight's lucky region is... The West! Now, representing the West tonight, we have another guest judge, one of the most beloved chefs across Southern California. She has six best-selling cookbooks and multiple James Beard nominations. Please welcome the amazing Susan Fenniger. Oh my God! Oh, nice. Good to see you. Welcome. Welcome to the Master Kitchen. What Thank an absolute you. pleasure Thank having you. you here. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Um, now, you've called LA home for so long. Your iconic restaurants have really helped shape the LA landscape for over 40 years. How would you say that the West helped shape your empire? Oh, I mean, the West is everything. We just we love the West. We've got this amazing agriculture. We've got the ocean. There's such great diversity here. I think because of that, it gives you the opportunity to be incredibly creative. What do you want to see tonight from these phenomena from the West? To me, the most important thing is every ingredient that you put on has to really stand out. You know, it should look pretty, for sure, sure but flavor is the most important thing. Amazing, amazing. Now, listen carefully, to get your hands on those white aprons tonight, you'll need at least three yeses from the judges. All of you, the very best of luck, and more importantly, do the West proud. We'll see you in the restaurant.
It's taken us 10 years to get you here, but thank you, honestly. Finally, I'm so excited to be here. It is a incredibly exciting night tonight with the West. Being a cook in the West is probably like being a painter with the greatest palette of colors to have, because you can draw from anything, the ocean, the mountains, the plains, the yeah. deserts, you have everything. Electrifying West Coast. Yep. Brace yourselves. Fairbanks, Alaska. I am passionate about where I live, and I could not be more excited to rep my state today. I'm Lizzie, I'm 29 years old, and I am a preschool teacher's aide. Living in Alaska is wild, it's exciting. In the summer, because of the extreme sunlight, we get to do so much outdoors, but in the winter, we have darkness all the time. So that's why I started cooking. Oh, you got this. I got this. Cooking has completely changed my life. I'm involved in so many different things. In the evenings, I get to help make pizza dough at a local pizza place. And on the weekends, I get to teach cooking classes. It's really good. <laughs> at this point in my life, I am ready to completely involve myself in the culinary world. And I know that MasterChef can help me do that. Guys, it's good and fancy. Man, good evening. <laughs> you okay? I'm fine. Amazing. Name is? Lizzie from Alaska. Lizzie from Alaska. Lizzie from yes. Alaska. Yes. Love that. Uh, what's the dish? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing an oven roasted halibut with a cauliflower puree, pan seared mushrooms, and a fresh herb oil. Mmm, that sounds amazing. Yeah, the, and is it Alaskan it halibut? It is Alaskan halibut. Are you roasting this? I'm a little nervous about that, but it's gonna it's gonna happen. Were you practice on before you got here? Uh, <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and what would you give it on a scale of ten? A 20. A tw wow. A 20. Okay, okay, yeah. Do not overcook that halibut. Yes, uh, sir. It smells delicious. Good luck. Thank you. Nice it's so you good both. to meet you Great. both. Great to meet you. Good to see you. All right. Got it. Like, four more minutes. Five, maybe. important dish I will ever make in my life. I am not leaving without that apron today. Welcome. My name is Lizzie. I'm from Alaska. And this is roasted Alaskan halibut, cauliflower puree, pan seared mushrooms, and a fresh herb oil. Right. Whereabouts in Alaska do you yeah. live? I'm in work? Fairbanks, right in the center. We're quirky. We're fun. We have a beautiful culture. It's incredible. Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, visually, Joe, what do you think? I think it looks top notch. Like, I love the cook on the halibut. It looks all balanced and done right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The roasted mushrooms look gorgeous. That little bit of lemon and the sprig of thyme. I just, I love the way this looks. This is exactly my kind of food. Do you? Susan, how was that for you? I love the flavor of the oil. I love the earthiness of the mushrooms with the cauliflower, which just tastes great. So I have to say, it's a yes all the way for me. Okay, thank you. For me, I just love the confidence of the mushroom. Yeah. They're earthy and bold, and they stand up to the halibut. When you do things like that, it makes me want to say yes. Thank you. Flying start, two yeses. Um, you only need three. I think you've done yourself a bit of an injustice. White and white, I'm not a big fan of. But the puree underneath, sublime. I mean, really delicious. Uh, Joe? Yeah, I, I'm a little bit dumbfounded. I've never tasted halibut that tasted quite like that dish makes it taste. OK. And that is a really good thing. I'm going to say yes, which gets you an apron. And I'm going to give a compliment that I don't give usually. This okay. dish is meritous of being copied. It's that good. Thank you. Very good job. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited to see what you can do in this competition. <laughs> it's a, yeah. a very solid yes from Thank me. You. Come over. Great. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Come on. Thank you, guys. Hold it together. Well yeah, incredible. Great job. Four yeses. Congratulations. Well done. 
<laughs> I just got my apron. <laughs> I'm so proud to represent Alaska. You deserve this. You did this. We have a strong region in the West. Those other regions better watch out. Everyone's rooting you back home. You've got this. You are a baking daddy. It is beyond important to rep my region. I think I'm the only one here from Utah. I got to do my state proud. I eat salmon every single day, and the dish I'm making is a spicy salmon tostada. The tostada shell is actually salmon skin, and it is going to blow the judges' minds because it blows my mind. You make that dough. You want to make it. I am making a uh, what Utahs refer to as uh, scones, which are flatbreads, along with a uh, raspberry lemon vanilla compo and a basil lemon cream to go with it. So this is a bite of Utah, 100 percent. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, I am Gigi, also known as the Salmon Queen. You're the Salmon Queen. Oh yeah, I eat eight to 10 pounds of salmon a week. Eight to 10 pounds a week, that's a whole freaking salmon a week. Oh yeah. What? 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 I don't have my glasses. What, what does it that say? It says salmon. I have a tattoo in my mouth that says salmon. Why did, why did you do that? Because I always have salmon in my mouth. What? <laughs> <laughs> Give us an insight to the dish. I made some spicy salmon tostadas. But the best part is the tostada shell is actually crispy salmon skin. I'm wondering why there's nothing cooked. You're a salmon queen, but you're not cooking salmon. You're frying the skin. Um, it's almost like a snack or a canapé, because it's not a dish, is it? It's not a full-on dish, no. No. The tastiest thing on that board is the actual skin. This dish is pedestrian. It does everything except exalt the magnificence of salmon as an ingredient. I don't taste the salmon at all. OK. This dish would have potential, but it needs just to be balanced a bit more. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that it's a big no. Uh, it's definitely not good enough for an apron. My name is Tyson. I am 38. I am from Taylorsville, Utah. This is what Utahns know as a scone with a raspberry compote and a lemon basil whipped cream to go with it. On its own, I think this could have a bit more flavor. Every dough needs salt, whether it's puff pastry, short pastry, because it just tastes like fried bread. Not salting a fried dough like that is a real amateur mistake. Okay. For me, it's a no. I appreciate the passion and the heart behind it, but I'd have to say no. Tyson, unfortunately, that's two no's. What a shame. Thank you very Thank much you. for the opportunity. Thank you. It's okay. I'm proud of you. We can't overlook the fundamental mistakes, you no. know, salting and things like that. We just Push. really have to hold the standard high. Yeah, I'm Amanda. I'm a stay-at-home mom in Sherman Oaks, California. Oh, it smells good. I'm a California girl, I'm a California native, and I love California. I have three kids. I spent my life making sure they're well taken care of every single day. I love being a mom. But cooking is my passion, obsession, and now it's my time. Let's go, babe. You got this. 27. And you're cool under pressure. Wow. It's amazing. Five. MasterChef is the ultimate opportunity of a lifetime, and I want that apron bad. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Amanda, and my dish is an herb-crusted halibut with sautéed tomatoes and fennel and pickled purple cauliflower. Shall we? Right. OK. 
Listen, it looks like it's a really nicely cooked piece of halibut. Yeah, I appreciate your, your approach to, to the freshness, but I'm just concerned with the amount of olive oil is going to be too much. Shall we? You have fennel pollen on top, right? Yes. I think I better to steal that so I can see how that looks. Um, the halibut's cooked beautifully. Oh, my God, thank you it's, so much. It's seasoned beautifully. Oh. The fragrance of the fennel, it's exceptional. It's a perfect harmony. A little bit longer on the quick pickling for the cauliflower, big deal. Uh, I am a absolute resounding yes. Really thank good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. To me, this very much speaks California with the olive oil, the tomatoes, plenty of basil, and the flavor from the fennel. I'd have to give you a yes. Thank Ooh. you so much. Uh-oh. Two for two. Um, I don't. I stand corrected as far as the oil. I think it actually needs it. With that being said, I think it's too many onions. I think the sweetness of the tomatoes is too much. And the fennel pollen is just so aggressive. It's completely dominating my palate. So for me, that's a no. Wow. Amanda, that's two yeses and one no. You need three to land an apron. Joe, it's in your hands. Please. I'm in a difficult position here because we're looking to give out a coveted West Coast apron. I promise you, I can do this. I was a stay-at-home mom because I had three kids, and it was important for me to be there with them. But now this is important for me to do for myself. Joe, yes or no? Amanda, that's two yeses and one no. You need three to land an apron. Joe, yes or no? I will work hard. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Bye, Amanda. Don't let me down. That was a big investment. I will, a big I will investment. not let anybody down, I promise. Chef Apron, I am so excited. I will spend the rest of the season proving to Joe that I deserve this apron. This is some of the best cooking I've seen. This is an amazing level we're at this sure. year. Two aprons down in the West and three to go. Absolutely. I am here at MasterChef to show what the West is made of. My name is Megan. I'm 41 years old. I live in Cokeville, Wyoming, and I'm a motel owner. I really wish I was a judge right now. This would be delicious. A year and a half ago, my husband and I, we found this motel that just happened to be for sale that was a fixer. So we moved from Seattle, Washington, and we kind of jumped right into it. The motel is a family affair. It's 15 rooms. All of us get involved. It entails a lot, but we have the support of our family and each other. Oh, yeah. Espresso is in. We got this. Yeah, everybody's here supporting you. Cokeville, Wyoming is the true Old West. It's a town of about 500 people. We don't even have a grocery store. And so I've had to get really creative in cooking just by necessity. How's it taste? Tastes it's good? good? Oh, Gordon's here. Gordon's here. Hello. Hi. Yeah, nice to see you. Hi. Hi. I am making an espresso custard, and I'm serving it in a dark chocolate cup with caramel whipped cream on the top. I do Sounds like good. caramel and chocolate, and I like that combo together. Where's the idea come from? Where did it start? I'm from Seattle originally, mm -hmm. and it's a coffee shop on every corner. You got enough time to get it done within 45 I, minutes? I do. I've done Love it. Love that. Um, is Mum going to do it or not? Yes, I didn't even like coffee, and this made me love it. Fingers crossed. High five. Amazing. Good luck. Thank you. Get that chocolate in the mold. Doing a dessert is a risk because custard is kind of technical to make. Same with the chocolate, you have to temper it. Look at that chocolate. It's a brave dish to take on, but I think I can do it. All right, make it look pretty. My 
whole life. I have taken leaps and today that's what I'm here to do. I wanna see what I can do in the MasterChef kitchen. Welcome. Thank you. Wow. Hi. My name is Megan. I live in Cokeville, Wyoming. I'm from Seattle, Washington originally. So this is an espresso custard served inside of a dark chocolate cup topped with caramel whipped cream. Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, Susan, visually, how does that look? It's beautiful and certainly really well done. And, and you made that cup. I did. Oh, you made the cup yourself? I did. Did you I... make the espresso too? I used espresso powder. Mm. Look, I think it looks fancy, you know? It looks like you could serve it in a roadside motel. <laughs> as well as a restaurant, as well as yeah. a restaurant. Yeah, I mean, it's got the wow factor, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, uh, Megan, you know, three yeses from four judges. Um, Susan. I think the flavor of it is really quite delicious. The garnish is not exactly what I would do. I like it more based on the chocolate and the espresso okay. and the caramel itself. But the flavor is quite nice. Thank you. It's a yes for me. Ooh, by the way, I'm wrong. I'm shocked that you were able to get that much flavor in that custard, to be honest. That is the obvious star of this dessert. For me, I think there's enough flavor here, enough of that sort of passion for your dessert making that I'm going to say yes. Thank you. Two yeses. Um, Joe, please. I, I'm having a little more difficulty with this dish because for me, it's really about tasting the bitterness of coffee. And I don't feel that this dessert has that component. I think the custard tastes goopy, kind of like Elmer's glue with, with coffee syrup in it. So for me, it's a no. Okay. We have two yeses, one no. I guess it's all up to you, Gordon. What do you think? Visually, it had that wow factor. It does need a sponge to lighten the load because it's very sweet. Okay. I would have dropped that caramel, but it didn't really need it. It needs more bitterness. Um, it's a tough one. I feel like it was a great dish. Two of the judges really liked it. I'm not going to stop cooking. I'm going to keep going. Oh. We're proud of you. Thank yeah. you. We're expecting a lot from these yep. West Coast cooks. It's a tough one. At this point, we have to be really selective. Yeah. turned out to be. Yes. I think a lot of people underestimate Hawaii because they think it's just super chill, to relax. Like, they don't take us seriously like we're just a vacation destination, but that's not true. Yes. So, I'm really excited to represent. Aloha. My name is Madame Donut. I'm 48 years old, and I'm from Maui, Hawaii. I'm the queen of donuts. <laughs> I really am. About 10 years ago, I started a donut shop. I make everything from scratch. I even make my own sprinkles. However, it's time to show everybody that I'm very multi-layered and I can do so much more than donuts. So today, I'm making an ahi tuna musubi with crispy sushi rice and the soy gastric. I want to show the world how elevated a convenience food can be. Here we go. Aloha. Hello, how are you? Aloha, how are you? Aloha, how are you? To meet you. Whoa, what are we making here? I came here to represent Maui. So I'm making a musubi. A Hawaiian staple, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Traditionally, it's made with spam. I'm using ahi. Okay, do you think you have enough ele elevation to get you one of those coveted aprons? A hundred percent. You're cooking against maybe cooks from Southern California, Portland, Oregon, and then you have Hawaii, which is cool, but it's not the first place I think of when I think of food, quite yes. frankly, because... Joe, look at this. I, it's a... Oh, the name. Uptown! Excellent! I like that, that's sass. I'm here to change your mind. All right, good luck. So just, yeah, I like the fact that you're tasting, that's Thank awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Cool. All right. 
My dish has a lot of components. The rice for sure has to be cooked right. The fish has to be cooked right. I don't want to overcook the fish. And also just representing all the colors of the ingredients that I brought in. Come on. One minute. You got this. You got this. I closed my donut shop to be here because I want that apron. 20 seconds. Come on. Oh my god, I don't know where to put things. Chili. My dish turned out 90% of how I wanted it to be. Some components I didn't get on the plate, the dragon fruit dressing and the pickled ginger. But I'm really hoping that the judges will really see the potential and the magic on this plate to give me the apron. Welcome. Aloha, chefs. Uh, you Aloha. look amazing. Uh, give us an insight. Your name, where you're from? I'm Madame Donut. Madame what? Donut. Do donut? Uh, yeah, like a donut. Madam Donut. I, I literally changed my name. Normally I'm calling individual donuts. Now you've been asked to be called a donut. <laughs> it's not a compliment when he says <laughs> it, right? You know that. I know, I know, and I don't mind. <laughs> OK, what's the dish, please? Um, I live on Maui, and I'm representing Hawaii on this plate. So this is an ahi musubi with crispy sushi rice and soy gastric to go with it. OK. Right. I love how this dish represents you. It's yes. colorful, it's vibrant. I know there's going to be a little bit of spice and a little bit of that, that sort of sassiness and flavor. I'm curious about the negative space. You left half of the plate empty. I wanted to put pretty dots of the dragon fruit dressing. That you ran out of time? Yes, sorry. It's kind of like I'm on Hawaiian time and I'm trying to kick my butt to kind of get into <laughs> gear. You're on mainland now. But let me tell you something. You got to make it happen in the 45 minutes that you have. I know. Shall we? Mm. Um. You need three yeses to get your hands on an apron. Um, that's a tough one. You need three yeses to get your hands on an apron. Um, let me tell you something. Tuna's cooked beautifully. Thank you. Rice needs to be a little bit more crispier, if I'm honest. That's a tough one. For me, it's a no. Yes. Go back to Maui, but a yes to get an apron in MasterChef. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Susan? This is exactly my kind of dish. It's perfect saltiness. It's got the right amount of acidity. I'm with Gordon. It's a yes for me, too. Thank you, Chef. Oh yeah. The rice is the silent star here. I love the fact how you transform the ahi into like almost a steak texture. It's kind of robust, and I think that's beautiful. So? I believe enough that this is a yes. I'm going to give you oh that Oh my anchor. god, thank you, Chas. Thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god. Congratulations. Three yes. Congratulations. Boy, you want to hear what I I'm think? I'm so glad you're yes. All right, I'm going to tell you something. It's time for the donut queen <laughs> to leave the donuts behind and move on to restaurant quality dishes like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a yes. Four yes. 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 Thank yes. You so Congratulations. Much. Oh my god. Congratulations. Miss oh Donut, my god. we're officially now going to give you the title of MD. That's yes. going on that apron, MD. okay? Yeah. Congratulations. MD. Well done. <laughs> Unreal. They all said yes to me, like, holy, <laughs> holy. <laughs> that was great. Uh, yeah. That was delicious. I really like that. I want more of it. She did a great job. Really good she job. chose herself. Mm, why would you turn your name into a donut? You should become Gordon Wellington. <laughs> yeah. I call you G. Wells from now on. Lord Wellington. Gordy Wellington. <laughs> Fabulous. Great dish. Absolutely. My name's Kennedy, I'm 26. I'm from Denver, Colorado. I grew up surrounded by wildflowers on a farm on 12 acres. 
absolutely proud to be from Colorado. I'm a wild girl, I'm from the mountains, and it definitely shaped who I am today. It was really good. That was like the best I've ever done it. Hello. Hello. How are you? You good? I'm good. How are you? You look amazing. <laughs> Tell us about the dish. What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing an elk tenderloin over rainbow carrots with a blueberry compote. Love that. Elk. Nothing more mountain girl, right? <laughs> How are you going to cook this elk? I'm going to sear it just real quick over top and leave it in the oven to finish. I'm mm. looking for a medium rare. Why are you toasting that rosemary? Um, I want to open up the aromatics. Yeah. Uh, great idea. Right. Wow. Love this. The kind of dish you cook at home? Um, I live in a school bus. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> what? what? Did you did you forget to drop her off? She just she did an overnight in the bus. Me and my girlfriend renovated a school bus. We work all around the country following festivals. We're just a little weirder in the West. We love that. We love That's that. That's why we love my, the my West. My motto has always been stay weird. It's got a little something different to us. So. Make sure that rests well. Don't slice that piping hot. Yeah. Yes. Can't wait to see it. Thank uh, you. Good luck. Thank you so much. That looks good. I'm definitely not your normal cookie cutter kind of girl. I currently live and travel full time in a renovated school bus. I have a living room, I have a bathroom, I got a kitchen, but all I have is a camper stove. So I really want to prove to the world that a girl who lives in a school bus can still throw down in a huge kitchen. Then you let it rest? Yeah, I have to let it rest. I decided to do a risky protein like elk because you got to really know what you're doing when you work with it. It's very easy to overcook. That's beautiful. That's perfect. She be playing. My mouth is watering. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Just because I, I cook on a school bus, that doesn't mean I can't handle bigger things. Right. I'm a badass chef. I'm from the mountains. I can handle wild game, and I'm ready to go. Welcome. Hello. My name's Kennedy, I'm from Denver, Colorado, and today I made for you an elk tenderloin over rainbow carrots with a blueberry compote. Wow. Sounds good. Aprons are few and far between. Uh, elk is one of the most difficult, tempestuous proteins on the planet. Why elk on a night like tonight? I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of who I am as a person. I'm a mountain girl, and elk obviously is from Colorado, and I just wanted to show my heart. I love that. Yeah. Shall we? Let's go. Yeah, Indeed. let's taste. Uh, visually, it pops. Uh, elk is absolutely beautiful. You can see that pink gradient of that from the center out. Uh, beautifully done. The plate is gorgeous. Thank you, Chef. Shall we? Yeah. yeah. Together. The elk is the most difficult protein being cooked in this kitchen tonight. And you absolutely nailed that. Really Thank nailed you, it. Chef. Do you cook like this in the school bus? I sure do. Wow, that's one glamorous I bus. Me back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could do one more thing on there, I think. Okay. Parsnip puree, something a little bit more earthy, get rid of the sweetness. Um, okay. But it is an absolute yes from me. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank you. I love that you did a blueberry compote with vinegar, and it's got sort of the perfect combo together. The carrots are perfectly cooked, and the elk is just delicious. Thank you, Chef. So I think I'd have to say it's a yes. Thank Superb you. handling of the elk. I love your boldness. I mean, the fact that you sliced it to show off your confidence in cooking it says a lot about you. And for me, it allows me to feel confident in giving you a yes. Excellent dish. You're exactly what we're looking for. An apron for the West Coast. You represent a region, a philosophy, a way of life. Congratulations, then. You have a... Uh, an apron. Thank Great you job. So much. Well done. Yeah. Great job. Well done. Don't lose that. All right. Amazing. It feels good. Really awesome. good. Well done. <laughs> Congrats. Thank yes. you so much. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She's coming. She's coming. means everything to me. It just proves to myself that I have what it takes to be here. I mean, I got four yeses. On a scale of one to 10, this is literally the best day of my entire life. Yay! I'm so proud of you.
even though West Side's the best side. Get after it, Cal. <laughs> All right, there we go. Hi, Bud, you guys? Hey, nice how you doing? Nice to see you. Doing? Nice nice to see you. James. James, good to see you, Bud, you guys. Feeling good. Where are you from? Portland, Oregon. Y'all here for the West? We the best. You know, I got some time. Give us an insight to the dish. What are you doing? What is I, it? I am doing a Northwest crab cake nice. with a saute squash. Oh, I nice. love that okay, idea. Goodness. Growing up, was it mom taught you to cook? Or was it dad? Who was it? Uh, it was my mom. She yeah. taught me how to cook. I love that. Is mom here? No, uh, fortunately, she uh, had passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Dan? sorry about so, that. Uh, just... Well, let's do this for mom. What was mom's name? Gloria. 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 Yeah. What did she teach you growing up? That I could do anything. Good. I love yes. that. I think you should call these the glorious Gloria crab cakes. Oh, you know yes. what? That's it. The that. glorious, glorious crab cake. Yeah. I love it. Do yeah. adjust this. Thank yes. you. Good to see you, bud. I'm going to give you a hug. Uh, Appreciate it. <laughs> 20 minutes ago, James. Let's go. You got this, buddy. Woo! Makes me nervous like he's going to cut himself. <laughs> Mom, I'm not going to cut myself. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Young man, how are we? What's up? I'm good. First name is? Calvin. Calvin, good to see you. Uh, young man, how old are you? I'm 18. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Aren't you in school? I was going to say, should you yeah. be in school? My, don't tell my teachers, all right? No. <laughs> 18 years of age. Listen, four years ago, you could have been on Mars Chef Junior. I know. <laughs> was he always excited about food growing up? Yeah, he loved eating it. He loved cooking it. And he was just always in the kitchen, always right next to me. So. What are you making here? So I'm making uh, fried halibut cheek tacos. Wow, okay. I like the idea. Halibut cheek. And you're serving a taco to Ron Sanchez. Are you mad? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't turn back now. Well, no, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> you're too right. You're right. Make sure it's a good one, man. Good luck. Yes, yeah, nice one. Thank you so much. Let's go. Let's go, James. You know we're going to get it. Woo. Good job, Cal. Let's go, Cal. Come on, buddy. Let's go, Cal. Perfect. Yeah, boy. Oh, Go, Cal! My name is Calvin Berkeley. I'm a high school student from San Diego, California, and I made halibut cheek fish tacos with a kiwi watermelon salsa. Susan, what do you think? One of the things that I love is it does look like you made this nice and crisp, which is really important and very challenging to do. It's all about the flavor as well, right? Yeah. Shall we? Young man, you need three yeses tonight to get your hands on an apron. A taco has three elements that need to work in synergy. The tortilla, you have your protein, and then you have your garnish. I think you put way too much oil in tortilla. And then kiwi and watermelon have no business being there. Unfortunately for me, sadly, it's a no. See how the tortilla falls apart? Part of what you need is maybe a base to hold some of the juice. You want to be able to pick it up, but you don't want it to have to fall apart like that. Yes, chef. Honestly, you'll get there, but I'm a no. Unfortunately, that's it. Two no's, and I'm sorry. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is James, 31 years old from Portland. These are glorious, glorious crab cakes with tartar sauce and saute squash. Where does the passion from cooking come from? It came from my mom, and um, I have a twin brother. Unfortunately, he can't be here mm. with me because he's handicapped. I miss him so much. Yeah. And my brother said, hey, I'm going to hold it down the fork. You can go to Master Jeff and, and uh, see if you get an apron. I mean, you're clearly a passionate guy, but what's your dream? Uh, my dream is to uh, open a food cart, you know, serving soups. I love making soups. Love it. Shall we'll we? Check it out. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, visually, I love the colour on the crab cake. Um, it looks like it's packed with flavour. Thank you. Shall we? Overall, I have to say, the crab cake is really what's so compelling, and that's taking over my palate in a beautiful way. With that being said, for me, it's definitely a yes. I would have liked the crab cake a little bit more higher heat to give it a little bit more crispness, but the flavor of it seasoned really well. I'd say yes. Thank you. United Taste of America, this year, we're going up a level. James, oh, man. That is one of the best crab cakes I've ever tasted. It is an absolute yes from me. <laughs> Thank you. Come here. You good? <laughs> Thank you so much. There you go, young man. Get that on. There you go. Yeah, yeah you know. Smile. And let's just give a big moment to Mum. Congratulations. Congratulations. Great job. Great job. Uh, well done. Good man. This apron means the world to me. You know, I'm able to make my brother proud, my mom proud. It means I want to step closer to my passion, to my dream, and fulfilling that. Are you surprised that they're amateurs cooking at this level? This is what I think about the West. You could see tonight some of the quality that was there. I feel like they're cooking better than some of the cooks we have in our restaurants. Three regions down, one to go. This is it. Next time on MasterChef, please welcome Tiffany Derry. It's the last night of the regional auditions. How about Let's go! It's a spicy southern showdown. Oh what are you doing? <laughs> Step away! As the hopeful home cooks fight it out for the final five aprons. If I overcook this steak, they might kick me out of Texas. This dish takes me straight back to New Orleans. I'm a big yes. This is as perfect a medium rare as we've seen on this show. Mm. 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 Oh, damn. Broke my tooth. Oh. One potato, two potato.